The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618 the trader's edge now steve rhodes good afternoon folks welcome to the january 21st man 21 days really flies by quickly but it is the uh terrific tuesday or taco tuesday edition of today's trader Z show i'm your host stevie perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past hope everyone out there is having a great day Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but much more important than that, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there too. You can send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, in our Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, what we've got is a mixed market out here. You've got the Dow down 20. The uh, S&P is flat. It's off by less than one point. NASDAQ 100 up 10 points. Russell is off eight. Semis are up four. So a little bit of everything. You've got the spot volatility trading out at 1244. The more important thing is what it did earlier today, which was tested and rejected its 50-day exponential moving average. Boy, you'll get to see that level um, and why Stevie uses that as a uh, go-no-go zone, so to speak, out there. Uh, so we'll take a look at that. Gold's off five bucks. Silver's down 29 cents. She traded out at 1778. Light sweet crude is flat. Uh, natural gas is not flat, down another 6% or 12 cents. Trying to find a bottom, but where, oh, where is that bottom? Lead the charge to the upside. Tesla's up 31 bucks. Beyond Meat, 16. Galapagos uh, Islands, really, it's NV, but they're up about 12 bucks. Shopify, 11 to the downside. Booking Holdings, 40 buckaroonies, about 2%. Regenerate Pharmaceuticals, $17. That's nearly 5%. Mercado Libre, 16 bucks, 2.5%. Aberdeen Standard, down uh, 10 or 4%. So, certainly things to look at, but we are going to look at what you want to look at. The first request coming in from Chris B. Chris B. writes in and says, uh, what's your thoughts on Tilray? Where is it likely headed over the next three to six months? You're long some call options. So real quickly here, if we take a look at uh, Tilray on the three time frames, we know that Tilray ran into some resistance this morning. That resistance set up and established by its brand new bullish structured TAS market profile. Uh, that uh, top of that box is 22.52. Yes, price got above that, but it's trading well below that. Well, it's trading below that at 21.34 out there. Um, your question is, well, first, you know that you've got a resistance level that needs to be taken out, 22.52, to continue higher. If we take a look at the weekly chart, um, was there a new profile? No, it's this week that it's formed. So in this case here, uh, Chris, You've got a brand new weekly profile that formed below price that is typically bullish. Now, I say typically, let me describe what typically actually means. It's bullish. However, if price does duck back inside that profile, that would mean a close below 2027. Then you should be looking at price getting back to 1952, the bottom of that daily profile out there. But as long as price stays above that, that looks good out here. You're asking for a, a target over the next uh, several months out here. Well, if we look at the weekly time frame chart, you're going to see that this formed both a uh, TD9 count bottom 
Rhodes Momentum Indicator bottom. It did that uh, last week when it generated that bullish engulfing candle. And now what we're looking at is 2380 is your resistance area. So we had a resistance area with a brand new daily profile. That's going to be slip different than the weekly level out here. 2380 is the breakdown resistance point. Uh, using that TD setup nine count. So you're really looking for some type of close above 2380. If you see that, then the longer term run would take you back into the breakdown, the pre the prior breakdown area, which is at 82, 81. But right now, you've got resistance at 2380. Uh, that uh, level has not been tested. Um, there's not anything here to suggest that it won't, but uh, the confirmation would come with a close above the top of that new daily profile. And that number, again, is 2252. There's nothing on my monthly charts, whether I look at this uh, black background uh, one that does not have enough data to get uh, monthly profiles. And I don't see any other signals on my monthly time frame chart out there, Chris. So best of luck with that uh, trade that you are in. I hope that helps you out. LB writes in, uh, Lee writes in and says... Um, a fair, some very nice things. That uh, Thank you very much. Uh, you bought uh, this a couple of weeks ago. I'm looking, where's the, this? Uh, could you take a look at NVAX? There we go. Uh, NVAX. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, punch this up here, see what we've got with regard to profiles. Oh, nice big move today. Uh, you bought it a couple weeks ago. See what just simply what are the thoughts on the uh, charts out here. So look, you're above the daily and the weekly profiles and price ran into resistance this morning at the uh, bottom of its monthly, which also happened to be the center of its monthly. If you look in the data panel on the upper right hand screen, you'll see that the um, you've got volume at the very bottom and you got BOT for bottom, CTR for center, TOP for top. Those are of the profile. Sometimes I use the word box, even though we don't see a box out here. But um, so you, you're running, you're right, you're sitting right at resistance, Lee. Um, it's, it's clear, yes, you've broken above resistance daily and weekly, but now we can understand what's going on from a monthly standpoint out here. Uh, from a monthly standpoint, what else is going on? If I look at, is there any bottoming signals out there? And there was a TD9 count, uh, well, it's so, it's too, too little data for me to really be able to say, yeah, you can see the Rosen went to Medicator top out there for about 300 that took this thing down into the eight. So, you know, worthwhile to pay attention to those patterns. Most certainly that was a monthly chart. Let's pull back the uh, the weekly chart out here. What do we see? What else do we see? 1110. So if price can get above this area here, above that top of that or the bottom of that uh, monthly profile, then you're looking at 1110 as its next uh, area. This did form a Rose momentum indicator bottom panel, two of them. So, oops, sorry, two of them. So you can see this is really trying to form a bottom out here. That's ticker symbol NBAX. So I don't see any reasons to exit. You just simply are at resistance. Uh, you know, no topping signals, just resistance. And so all that makes sense to me. If I look at the uh, daily time frame chart, what do we have out here? Not a whole lot, not a whole lot for me to be able to on this chart to be able to provide you with anything. Let me pull this chart back just a tad further. Uh, oh, it really just means open it up. And then I'll get further back here. See if there's anything else. You know, really nothing other than this super gap out here. Super gap is uh, back from March of 2019 and that high of uh, $17. But we've got other levels for you to be focused on and paying attention to with regard to Novavax, ticker symbol NV. AX out there. So Lee, thanks for writing in. Hope that helps you out. Uh, we've got some other requests here inside the Tiger's Den. Let's get to some of those. Uh, let's see, Jay, uh, I'll just work my way up. Jay wants to take a look at the uh, TAS market profiles out there real quickly. Jay, there's none. There were some this morning. They have uh, since evaporated. Well, one exception being the Russell 2000. We'll get back to this break. We'll describe that to everybody that's listening in, but I'd love to hear from you. We'll be right back. Thanks. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, kind of a mixed market out here. Dow's off 38, S&P down 3, NASDAQ uh, just turned uh, slightly red off one point. Uh, so let's uh, pick up where we left off as we went into that break. Uh, as mentioned, the TAS daily profiles, well, daily and weekly, are what we have on this uh, screen out here. And uh, what you'll notice, so earlier in the day, Jay, um, well, this morning, I should say, early this morning, uh, the ES, the NQ, and the... Dow, I believe it was at least, or the ES and the Dow, both were trying to form uh, new market profiles. They have since gone away, so there's nothing there to report. Uh, with regard to and taking a look at these profiles, what we know is uh, the pullback this morning uh, was a test of support inside the NQ, and the NQ has been motoring things to the upside. So we want to really be paying attention to that. Right now, you would uh, the NQ would need to close below 89.40 uh, to, to give you a change in trend signal. Now, I want you to focus on that second panel from the left out here because so and you know how we work with the market profiles just to help us identify support and resist now there's other tools that stevie uses to also do that but just from a market profile perspective and this is why look you don't need to be early to try to get to the short side assuming there's going to be some type of pullback retracement but you would have a change in trend signal i believe you'd have a change in trend signal with two closes below 89.40 the current bottom of its end of its uh, profile daily profile for the nq now if you close below the daily profile that says okay what's the weekly doing well look where the top of the weekly is 8086 uh that is a uh, 900 uh, bush 800 and, you know what would it be 840 840 point move or so to the uh, downside so you don't need to really get it and not that that necessarily is where price would stop to the downside and maybe price doesn't get down there but that would become the next level of support out here and inside the es mini example and panel number one on the left 
um, that would be 3026. Now, there is a new profile that is attempting to form. I say attempting because we're using Stevie's advanced Doppler tool. And that's in the very right-hand panel chart, the Russell 2000. Um, it still has tested the 2019 high. That was the 1687.80 and has rejected that. So there's, it's still bullish. It's still in breakout mode. If we just simply say, hey, once you get above the 2019 highs, uh, the market's breaking out. And, and that's a fair statement out here. So that new profile, Jay, 1683 at the top, 1658 at the uh, bottom. But uh, we'll really have to circle back around tomorrow to see if, in fact, that is uh, what we want to be uh, if that new profile really does take hold. There are some other questions with regard to some ETFs. Uh, it, I, I believe Jimmy is looking for. Jimmy, one of them was the GDX, I believe. Oops, let me move this over here like this. Okay. So let's go take a look at the three time frames. You're looking for a short entry into the system out here. So in the GDX, uh, it, uh, here's what you know. Uh, price is trading above the bottom of its daily profile. That's 28.48. So if you're going to say, hey, where would be on the daily profile-wise, where's the best place to sell? Well, the best place would be the top of the profile. That would be 29.87. Um, I'm not saying it's going to get up there. I'm just answering the question, where's the best place to sell? 29.08 would be another factor. Price has been consolidating with inside its weekly profile between 26.72 and 30 bucks out there. Uh, it's not really providing us with a lot. Watch the uh, weekly. I'm sorry, the monthly. We did see a close above the top of the monthly last month. Remember, like two bars? Well, right now we're back below the top of that profile. That's 28.80. We're trading at 28.72. So that's what I see when I take a look at uh, that. Now, the GDX, you're looking for a top. It already topped. Just, just, just to be clear, the top already took place out here inside of GDX. It did that back on September the 6th out here. Did that with the Rhodes momentum indicator pattern out there. Right now, price is running right into Stevie's green line. So if you were of the opinion you want to take a, a short right now because you're just, you're just got a hankering to do that, well, then now is the time. Because there is resistance that is called Stevie's green line out there. A close above it, which about five cents higher than where we're trading right now. Well, then that would be suspect. But it's up at resistance on a daily basis. Now, the weekly chart here, as we take a look at the GDX, let's pull this open. What do we see? This also top of the Rhodes momentum indicator signal here. Prices test and rejected Stevie's red line as well. That's a 28.88. So that's not a real uh, positive uh, outcome yet for the uh, GDX. So that's what I see, Jimmy. When we take a look at the uh, GDX, um, you're sh looking to short the SPY. Well, if you're looking to short the SPY, um, how do we do this here? First, I wet the lips. And then we go take a look at uh, the spot volatility index. Yeah, that's right, folks. We're going to go look at that spot volatility index. Look at this here. Look at this. A thing of beauty. As some of you might think, you know, that's Stevie just pulled that 50-day exponential moving average from uh, y you know where. The reality is I didn't. It was a lot of work to go back and try to figure out which moving average had the most significant impact on being able to help you and I understand what the markets are communicating to us. Bullish or bearish, that is. And in this case here, the actual high today is inside the spot volatility, 1333. Uh, the 50-day exponential moving average is 1332. you got to love that. Huh? And so far, what you've got is a rejection. So, Jimmy, you're looking for a place to short this buy. I'm going to say right now, hey, well, well, we're going to look at the short-term time frame charts. But it, with the message that you received today, just so you know, it's bullish. Now, if price closes above 13.32, a different story out there. But right now, we're going to give you the story because I'm not going to make up a story. I'm going to tell you the real story, the real message of the markets out there. So pay attention in that spot volatility, it's that 50-day exponential moving average. That is like the go, no-go zone out here. And right now, to the short side, it's saying no go, if you know what I mean. Now, if if, and there's the potential. Now, if we take a look at the daily time frame chart here for the ES Mini, so that's kind of an interesting thing. We'll go take a look at the cash because we may see some differences of opinion. But you do have a TD setup nine count pattern out here. That was because of the high on Friday. No, we haven't taken out that high just yet. If we do, though, what the ES Mini is going to do is get to wave number seven. That would be letter G. That's coming off of the swing point from right here 
on the trading day of uh, December the 3rd. You know how these markets do like to sing in the key of G. So there are topping signals and patterns all over the place. No roads momentum indicator pattern that is in play now for the ES Mini out here. And all price did today was test and reject Stevie's green line. Now, the green line is the oscillator on change line. That's the no-go go zone to tell you whether there's a retracement or was it just more of a retracement to test support and it's 125 in the afternoon was a retracement to test support so are the reasons to be skittish absolutely can we find a reason to take a short we can but uh, should you take that short uh, should you get on that horse and ride it to the downside well let's see what the giddy up and go signals say on the short-term time frame so if you were wondering which many were this morning when you saw those futures trading lower out there and you were saying ah you know you got that ecm target date of uh whether it was over the weekend you know so that the top must be in out there and you looked at it this morning and you were like i'm gonna jump on that train just to see the markets move uh, north out there well you would have benefited with the Rose Momentum indicator pattern out here. If you take a look at the high inside the ESPN on a 30-minute basis, that's what identified and formed the high. It did it back here when we got that dark cloud cover at about 4.30 in the afternoon. And what did price do earlier this morning? Well, as price was pushing lower into 4 a.m., it was doing so with less relative energy. Now, that alone is not the signal. You look for some, you look for the cavalry. The cavalry rides in with those bullish Japanese reversal candles. And that took place right here at 6 a.m. with that hammer candle and now price has run all the way back up to those highs or just short of it and there's a TD nine count potential depending on where this candle closes in about four minutes time Steve Rhodes with TFN and so far it's been a bullish test and rejection of Stevie's green line we'll be right back I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. 
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's off 62, S&P down 6 right now. So uh, let's go back to that 30-minute time frame chart here for the ES so I can uh, give you what to be uh, focused on and paying attention to. So right now, what we've seen, that little pullback we saw was nothing more than, in essence, a test of Stevie's green line. Now, we were anticipating that that would unfold, or you should have been anticipating that. Why? Because when that line changes color, that line, the oscillator and change line, went from green to red, there's a phenomena associated with that color change that tells us that price and that line are going to catch up to each other and they're going to give you a bullish or a bearish signal and so far that signal is bullish it's a test and a rejection of that area there is a brand new profile on the 30 minute time frame that is formed out here so we've got to watch how price uh, behaves should it be able to close above 3324 that's the top of the profile, or if it closed below 33.17, that would be the bottom. Now, if it closes below the bottom of the profile, um, then that suggests, uh, well, it suggests lower price. Wow, you've got to be a real rocket scientist for that one, Steve-O. Uh, but, uh, hey, it is what it is. So, right now, price has made it way back to a prior high out here. So, it kind of makes sense, uh, you know, that, uh, okay, it's given, given up the, not the ghost, so to speak. We just have sideways movement. So, that's a 30-minute time frame chart. You know, what's it telling us? What's the ES Mini telling us at the moment? Well, let's actually change over. Let's not just focus on the ES Mini. We should really be focused on the uh, the kingpin out here, right? That would be the NQ. And if we take a look at the NQ for its short-term time frame, it's really doing the same thing. So this morning, if you were using the Rhodes Momentum uh, Indicator Tools or your subscriber of Mastering Probability, get the newsletter. It helped you understand what the market was doing, even though it was lower, and people are scratching their heads, what does this mean? Jelly bean, well, we were saying, well, we already knew what it meant because of the signals that were down there. And if price could close above the top of its uh, profile this morning, which was 91 in the 91.45 level, well, we'd see price move up to 91.74. It's exactly what it did out here. Um, so where are, we, where are we at now? Right now where we're at is that test and rejection or potential rejection of Stevie's green line on the 30-minute time frame. That's, now let's go look at the deeper meaning here for the NQ. What, what are we going to be watching for? Let's say the market just simply sells off from 132 on for the rest of the day out here. Well, what you're going to be watching for in the daily time frame is some type of bearish reversal candle. Do we have that now? When you guys take a look at this, you guys and gals out there, I'm going to ask this question. Is today's candle, right now as you look at it, bullish or bearish? You're exactly right. It's a bearish candle. It's, a, it's called to, it's referred to a key reversal. Now, that's what it looks like at 133. It may look totally different um, this afternoon. Uh, the reason that it's a key reversal is the high of Friday and the low of Friday both have been penetrated. And you can see that this is a red-bodied candle. All it needs is one tick in the downward direction to be a key reversal. Now, it's a bearish reversal candle, but the signal itself is still bullish right now. And the reason why it's bullish is because price is above Stevie's green line. So the level to be watching is 91.36. Now, I've seen the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the corona uh, virus uh, talked about a bunch of the news. I see it here in the den. I see a lot of folks are, and, and we all should be interested in any kind of disease that's going to kill folks out there, obviously. Um, but uh, yeah, let me show you something that's kind of interesting, uh, do debt to everybody else out there. Uh, one of the things that I try to do, best that I can, is, uh, is keep an updated chart of, uh, of all the geopolitical, or many of the geopolitical, it doesn't contain all of them, all of the items, events out there. And so the last time we had a scare like this, so to speak, uh, let me see if I can, I know I can find it. I just just give me a second here. Here we go, S&P 500 geopolitical. That would be a place where you would store it. Now, if you take a look at this here, uh, so the last one when I think of this, this norovirus that's going on, which really is nothing like the other virus that the market was dealing with, but in the scariest moments of the Ebola outbreak, remember when it was here in the U.S. and they were trying to quarantine a couple of folks in some of the hospitals in the Northeast, uh, probably in Boston or somewhere, but I don't recall that, but I just want you to know that there was a, uh, that and I'm not saying the price won't head lower, but to the extent that that becomes the geopolitical type event out there. And just look at all these things here, things that you would think 
okay, would um, identify or mark uh, or, or signal just uh, continued moves lower in the uh, market out here. It's not always the way that you think it might be. And just go back here. Remember the downing of the Malaysian airline MH17. I believe that was the uh, number that identified a bottom. Uh, Bola in the in the in the deepest of hours out there. We saw an Ebola bottom. We got the China bear market bottom. We got the oil crush, so to speak, from 61 bucks to 26. That doesn't show this on the S&P, but that identified a bottom. Brexit identified a bottom. Sending Tomahawk missiles to Afghanistan identified the bottom. Robert Mueller coming on board identified the bottom. North Korean Ju uh, North Korea uh, missiles, where they uh, shot them uh, near the uh, near near the islands in Japan, Charlottesville, uh, Flynn guilty plea. You just kind of keep on going and going and going, if you know what I mean, out there. North Korean sub-missile launch, that was a uh, bomb. These are things that people in the news and the way that people report them uh, would make you think that the world is coming to an end and that it's falling apart. And if you didn't have this type of a uh, uh, set of tools or charts here to understand the, the way that the markets really respond uh, during these geopolitical type events out there, you know, then you'd be lost. But now you really know the types of things and, and a lot, uh, the types of things to really anticipate out there. So I'm not saying that it's bad or anything, but I just think that here's a couple of years worth of data. Well, more than that, right? I think go back, what, to 2014? So we're looking at about uh, and does this catch every single geopolitical type event out there? No. But, you know, when I see these changes in trend, I do try to identify what else might have been going on fundamentally out there. So I just thought I would just go ahead and uh, throw that in and, and share that. So uh, with regard to the, the markets, I think we really need to focus on the, well, the NQ, you know, should be the, should be the story out here. If markets are going to crack, we're going to see that. Uh, even with a bearish reversal candle confirming the road's momentum indicator signal right now, you got to see it close below at least 91.35. That's not going to get you below, obviously, the bottom of its daily profile, and that might just result in only a test of that. I don't know. The Dow itself, okay, the Dow certainly a leader. It's generated a road's momentum indicator uh, topping signal. Absolutely. How did it do that? Well, right now you got a bearish engulfing candle. Friday was a shooting star. So you got doble gi confirmations out here, but it's just knocking at the door of support that keeps uh, keeps on ticking. 29.157. You see the test and rejection. That's why Stevie's green line is so important out here. Well, at least I believe that it's important, and you and I like to actually go ahead and use it. If we take a look at what else is going on inside the markets, uh, let's go take a look at the uh, the advanced decline oscillator reading. Where is it? Just below zero right now. Uh, where is the spot volatility index? Well, right now it's still below the 50-day exponential moving average. We talked about that uh, just briefly. You do want to watch. If you were to see the spot volatility index close above that 50-day, okay, Remember, 1333-ish type area. That combined with the New York Stock Exchange um, advanced decline oscillator below zero uh, really suggests that sellers are in control. But then you've got to go back and take a look at those support areas inside of the uh, futures contracts or the daily cash contracts. Uh, I'll pull up a daily cash contract for you right now. Let me do that here before we go to the uh, break. And then we'll get to platinum and uh, some other another ticker symbol. I see John is wants to see something about FXI. So we want to get to all those questions out there. Here's the S&P 500. Let's just pull this over. Um, there's nothing bearish when I take a look at the daily time frame chart. Well, that could be a key reversal, too. Still, the S&P cash must close below 33.13. Steve Roach with TFNM. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. 
That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Uh, welcome back, folks. Uh, right now, you got the Dow uh, trading down 85. The S&P is off about uh, 10 out there. Um, uh, Maria in the uh, Tigers Den was noting the big move inside of uh, Treasury bonds. The 30 years up uh, over one full uh, point out there, uh, trading on 158.19. There's still resistance, and we can go take a look at that uh, for you as uh, well. But what we're seeing here, yeah, the U.S. dollar index is traded down a little bit. It's uh, five pennies out here. But really, when you see that rush, into bonds like that. It's also another way for folks to get into the U.S. dollar index, and that's really what is uh, going on. Uh, we've got a caller on the line, so we've got call-ahead seating. Let's go out to Jeff in New Jersey. Jeff, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? Uh, doing well. How are you, Steve? Very good. Thanks so much for asking. And uh, I know we're going to talk about Intel, so uh, tell the folks uh, what, what you're doing and how I can best help you. Sure. Um, so I have a, uh, like a policy for myself to not uh, hold a position over an earnings report. Okay. But I'm very conflicted about Intel. I'm looking at the daily chart, and there's a beautiful rounded bottom there. It's looking very bullish. It just kind of broke out a little bit today, pulled back a little bit, but it's looking really bullish. But the uh, earnings report is um, on the 23rd this week after the market closes. Okay. And I would really like to get some uh, calls on it, but but normally, you know, I feel like uh, earnings reports are crapshoots, so I'm, I'm kind of conflicted, and I, I wanted to ask uh, your thoughts on it. So my first question would be, how has that worked for you, generally speaking? Is that um, worked? Would you I, say I it's worked have, to your advantage? Uh, really good metrics, but I, I would say it's about 50-50, uh, somewhere in there, as far as um, how earnings report uh, relates to the uh, setup on the on the chart. Usually, okay. I'm glad that I did that. I'm not holding the stock at an earnings report because you know there are surprises often. Sure. Uh, so I really should stick with that. But this chart formation just looks so tempting that um, I, I thought I should get a second opinion. 
So this is great. I, I think this. So for that, thanks for that explanation. That's really helpful. Um, and so today's activity, as an example, Intel. If we take a look at the daily time frame chart, so something to add to maybe your thinking here is the fact that there is a, a bearish structured daily profile. Now, what that means, there's really three lines, or oftentimes there's three lines. There's a top. The top is uh, identified in red. The bottom is green. The center is a cyan uh, bluish uh, type color. Now, the top of a box is where sellers are lined up. The center of the uh, box is where both buyers and sellers believe there's fair value with inside that price range. Well, the price range here is between 6013 and 5729. But the t uh, center of that profile is at 5977, very close to the top. At the top, there's just sellers. At the center line, there's both buyers and sellers. Well, in this case, because it's so close to the top, there's more sellers located between 5977 and 6013. However, what price has done today, it's overtaken that. And a close above that, which would be 6013, and I would say two closes above that, so tomorrow, would be suggesting that there's a real breakout above resistance on the daily time frame. The last time that price was up here was on the trading day of uh, December 30, it was uh, January 2nd. Now, the volume there was about 1.7 or 17 million, yeah, about 17 million shares. You're at 17 million shares right now, so you're pushing to that swing point with volume. That's a nice thing. The question is, if it closes above that, and, and by the way, with regard to support, so your downside action uh, would be about 57.29, unless it just got awful out there, but that would be your support. So to, so you want to use that that thought process with regard to what's your current uh, holding price, although you're, I think you're taking a look at trying to just play this as, if I'm correct here, just simply play this as, as some type of call option going into earnings, or do you currently have a holding? Uh, well, I don't have a position now, and yeah, you know, I'm just going to get some call options. But my, like, if there was no earnings report before I knew the, the before I looked up the earnings report, I had a target up around 64 because of an AB equals CD okay. kind of yeah. pattern. Yeah. Right. So it looks like it, and also there's a 61.8 percent Fib level up there around 64. Um, so I was. Uh, that's what I was going to target, but before you know, I take a position. I always check the earnings reports. I go, oh, no. <laughs> well, um, so resistance-wise, so the, one of the roles for us is to try to identify support and resistance. And on the daily, which we've just covered, the weekly and the monthly, price is above resistance of its TAS market profile. So support is going to be on any move lower. is going to be somewhere in those profiles. could be the top, the center, or the bottom. When you're above the top, the top really becomes the potential support. But you have to also look to what's inside there. Now, would you take the call position? Should we take the, should, you know, be, yeah, it's breaking out, but should you take, what are the elements inside the charts to maybe suggest caution? Well, price is moving higher, doing less relative energy. So if there were to be some type of bearish reversal candidate, say tomorrow, then you would not want to take that trade with uh, because I would think that the markets would be signaling to you that price is at least going to pull back and test support. We don't have that right now. You just have a cautionary single signal on the uh, daily time frame out here. If I look to the larger time frame, the uh, weekly, and then we'll go to the monthly. Uh, on the weekly, do we see any sign of a top? We don't. We don't from a pattern standpoint. There's uh, You had mentioned an A to B equals CD pattern. If we take a look at it from a weekly standpoint, price is moving up towards the 1.618. A to B equals CD level. That would be 62.16. Does not mean that price would stop there. You're in wave number five on a weekly time frame. That's not necessarily a topping signal. Price above Stevie's green line, 59.48. So, you know, that, that there's nothing bearish about the weekly chart for Intel that I see, and there's nothing bearish about the monthly time frame chart once we expand this out, other than price is also moving higher, doing less relative energy. But until the bearish reversal candle shows up, you, you know, you, you'd be guessing. I would be, I would be guessing to say that you, it's just a cautionary sign. So I guess in the end here, um, you know, you, I don't see a reason to not take that trade, uh, but I wouldn't load up the truck necessarily. I'd rather see you take that trade when Intel's really making a bottom. You know, and all it's doing right now is it's in this bullish mode and you're trying to figure out, uh, you know, maybe where it's headed to. Is any, well, I I, and I don't think I answered your question before. I'm sorry. I think you're asking if I have a, a level for support. And, yeah, I do have a level of support is right below uh, the swing low of that slow round bottom. And there's also a 50 uh, day moving average uh, right under there also. 
Yeah, so, so on the daily, so, so right, so, do that. yeah, so your tools, that's great. So you've got that. I would add to support levels other than the profiles, my green line, which is about 6013, give or take right now. So that would be a, a level of support. So for me, the swing points themselves are not, I've shied away from using the, the swing points as support or resistance. It, but 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 I'm not going to try to I'm not going to talk you out of that. Uh, I don't want to talk you out of that. But here's the I think the question was, really you're looking for information. You know, should you would it be advisable to take that trade? I don't well, see specifically with consideration of the earnings report coming up in a couple of days. Yeah. So the the earnings report piece of it. That's why I was trying to understand. You know, your background with regard to has that worked for you? Because if it's worked, I would never want to try to talk you out of it. But here's what we know as we go into this break, and that's real simple. Um, Intel looks bullish. It's got a couple caution signs, but it, look, it looks bullish. And so your signals suggest to take the trade. I'm going to say go ahead and do it. Just don't back up the truck. Okay. I thank you very much. You bet. Have a great uh, day, and folks, we'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawn charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back. 
back, folks. Let's get right to it uh, with this last two minutes here. CenturyLink formed a nice road to momentum indicator top. Does that on November 19th. What does price do? Pulls right back to the breakout level. That was established by that TD setup nine count at the 1264 level. What is it doing right now? It's taking on resistance at 1446. Trade at 1451. A close above 1446 uh, would suggest a move back to 1508. That's what I see when I take a look at CenturyLink. That was for someone in the den. Jimmy D, maybe. Uh, John in Sarasota want to take a look at FXI. His uh, question is, is it time to bail? This is uh, not Ford, but FXI. Let me get that uh, punched in here. If we take a look at uh, FXI, big, huge gap to the downside. I don't know where you're in from. Uh, this is confirming a Rhodes momentum indicator top with today's gap to the downside. That creates that, uh, well, creates a gap, a three river evening star, the whole bit. John, a close, I don't know where you're in on this, but a close below 42.76 would suggest a change in trend. But you absolutely have a topping signal that is in place. So uh, just simply be careful. Hector, the fuel injector, wants to take a look at uh, Facebook out here um did facebook break out above its trading range here's your problem with facebook right now uh, as we take a look at it hector it bottomed with what roads momentum indicator bottom back on october 2nd you got the confirmation on october 3rd what is it doing right now today let me try to back this up price has been moving higher effective today with less relative energy. You've got a bearish reversal candle. That was easy to candle. That was easy to do with a small body candle from Friday. What is price not done? It's not closing below Stevie's green line. But if it does, and you see Facebook close below 219.21, you should expect to move back to the 203.60 to 209.69 area out there. So that one's for you, Hector. Wayne, let's see if we can get this in. He wants to take a look at uh, Netflix out here. Again, I'm just doing the daily charts out here, and I'm doing them rather quickly, but these are all good analyses. If we take a look at uh, uh, what we've got going on with Netflix, Rhodes momentum indicator, topping pattern, price is below Stevie's green line, price is headed to 329.85, below that, 313.55. Folks, thanks so much for being here. Stay tuned. Two more great hours of programming. You've got the Tom O'Brien Show. Of course, uh, before that, you've got my favorite polar bear, your favorite polar bear as well. That's David White. So stay tuned, and I'll see you on wonderful Wednesday. Have a terrific Tuesday, folks.